Michael is such a talented person, and then I only did two movies with him, and uh, one was better than the other, you know. So, I mean, through that Heaven's Gate didn't start out as a, as a success for a film, you know. It, it's, it was a shame, actually, that uh, the studio of actually United Artists who made a movie, they didn't stand behind the movie. It was beautifully done. It was a great movie, and they, they didn't realize what they had in their hand. Not today, you know, becoming a classic. He was a perfectionist. He selected, you know, many, many of the actors one by one himself. He didn't leave it to somebody else, you know, to, to just, uh, you know, send them to wardrobe and, okay, put them into the scene. He was, he was very careful to have the right uh, people who looked like uh, the Europeans who, who were immigrants in those days, you know, whether they were Hungarians or Slovakians or Czechs or Italians or whatever. And then he actually went for almost like a portrait photographer. He would select the people who would actually put in front of the camera. And you know, luckily in Montana, we could find a lot of people from, from, from European origin. You know, it was, it was interesting that, that we, could, uh, we could really fill in the screen with a lot of interesting faces. to have an old look, you know, like uh, you would look at old faded photographs of um, uh, things happened hundreds of years ago, you know. And, you know, we, we wanted to get the sort of sepia tones and uh, desaturate the colors. So have an old look, basically. And, uh, and you know, pretty much like what I did earlier before another movie called McCabe and Mrs. Miller. But this was a little bit different, you know, we didn't flash the film so heavy. In fact, uh, we didn't have to flash it too much because that in those days you know, there was a lot of smoke in, you know, coming from chimneys, coming from uh, heating sources, you know, and, uh, and outside a lot of dust. And the horses were riding, coaches, you know, things, they, they, it was a lot of dust. So. So we really like basically on a very natural look, not one effect uh, seen at all. Everything was done for real, everything. We used, uh, used to use some of the so-called Fuller's Earth. You know, that, that was an old trick, you know, what they used on Westerns and all that. They were they putting that uh, Fuller's Earth down on the, on the road where the horses were galloping, you know, through that. And, uh, you know, sometimes it saved the rest, you know, because it, it really has, was so beautiful, basically, when, uh, especially if the sun was shining from the right direction, mostly in back, backlight. You know, it lights up the dust, and it's so great. It was, for example, there was this uh, shot, you know, where the immigrants are walking on the road forever, you know, walking, you know, just maybe 500 extras we had, or maybe, maybe more. And originally, uh, Chimino was asking me that what time you would like to shoot this scene. I said, well, you know, it would be nice to shoot it in the morning between 7 and 8. So said, let's see what we can do. And guess when we, we, when we started to shoot that? In the afternoon at 4. Until everything got ready, people had to be dressed and rehearsed and all that. And then there was a lot of, lot of horses, a lot of uh, coaches and then and, and, people walking, kids and all that. And I was thinking about, well, the light would have been great at seven in the morning, but what am I going to do now? And we were so lucky because, because I, I, I didn't realize that the afternoon light would look better because they were coming from the left side and that light, if they would have been there, would not be as good as when they walked by us and created the dustbin them, themselves. And it was a gorgeous shot, you know. Uh, it was like a painting. We got, uh, got up in the morning 
in, in the battlefield, you know, after the battle, there were a lot of dead people, you know, laying down on the ground and all that, and we decided that we will shoot it at sunrise. So we set up all the cameras, you know, I, I remember that I was operating two cameras. <laughs> one was this was sort of a setup, you know, that you would use the still camera. And the other one was I was operating it, you know, because we had to, you know, either zoom in or pan a little bit. Okay, everything is ready, the sun is rising. And I start yelling, that Michael, the sun is rising, let's shoot. So we can't. What do you mean we can't shoot? I need some wind. I need the wind. I need the, the wind to pick up the, the dust, you know. Just I said, well, uh, how long you will wait? And the sun is going to go away. And we are waiting, waiting, nothing happens. Then Michael steps in front of the cameras. It's like he was an Indian and started to, started to do, throw up his arm and said, wind, 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 come wind, wind. Ten seconds later, this big gust of wind came. We could not believe it, you know. We could not believe it. And they started to yell, OK, roll cameras. <laughs> The roller skating thing, I think we had some photographs, old photographs from that. And uh, the, the tent itself, you know, which was built was, I'm sure that they built those tents in those days. And uh, as, as far as roller skating, obviously they have to go around and around and around if it's an interior, which was an interior. And the interesting thing was that what we did, because we knew that um, yeah, we are not going to use any lights in that scene, because we depended on, on available light. In those days, we had with a color film which was only uh, sensitized for tungsten film. That's all that we had. You know, and in order to shoot daylight, we had to put an 85 filter on it. And uh, we didn't want to use our 85 filter because there's too many cameras, and then we are going to lose, lose, lose some light. So we decided to shoot, to, to paint the tent inside with an 85 color. Like, like you would take an 85 filter, and we, we duplicated that, and we didn't have to use any filters. In those days, it was not possible, you know, to not use any filter, but we didn't. And that was really, we were free to shoot any direction, any time during the day, you know, when the sun was shining, shining. The only problem we had many times, and in Montana, we have a lot of clouds. So the cloud is flying by and covers the sun, and we suddenly, the light goes down two stops. Now, how do, how do we cope with that? You cannot say, cut, wait, wait for the clouds, right? So what we did actually, we, we put actually a, 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 an electrician outside with a, with a glass, a dark glass. I was watching the sun and the clouds. And when he saw that that cloud was coming over the sun, he said, OK, clouds are coming on three. One, two, three. And then the, all the assistants were looking, you know, what the, what the light was doing on the, on the top of the tent, and it started to open up their stuff, you know, one or two stops, depending on how heavy it was. And we did this all day long, and days and days, actually, when, um, we, when we shut up these sequences. And they all turned out good. I think we shot a lot of film, a lot of film. I remember, you know, that jokingly, you know, when we reached the million mark on foot footage, that we had a champagne and we, like, you know, we be fishing a boat. We actually broke that bottle of champagne and celebrated the million feet mark. Michael was accused of uh, using too much money on everything, you know. 
uh, the budget went up, you know, every day and all that. This was not the only movie which went over budget in those days. Remember Cleopatra? Cleopatra was probably cost more money in those days than Heaven's Gate cost. And it was not as good of a movie. <laughs> behind the scene issues. I, I don't I don't remember we had any behind the scene issues. It is always behind the doors, behind the office. Uh, I mean, I was not part of that at all. I don't remember ever somebody came to me, hey, why did you move faster? Why didn't we just cut corners and uh, no, nobody ever came to me to do that. Everything had to be done right, like it should be. <laughs> Michael, I, I was a very close friend in those days, actually, and I didn't see him since, actually, after, the, after that movie. I, I'd hardly ever seen him. But you know, as far as a person goes, I, I don't think that he was a criminal. I don't think that he was he had any any an, anything, you know. You know, occasionally he was very tense. He was yelling at people a lot of times, you know. But he was very impatient. You know, it, it's good directors sometimes are, are characters, you know, and then they would be yelling around and all that. But I must say that he never never yelled at me. Ever, you know, and if, if anything, he always listened to me. <laughs> there were some funny stories also, also, you know, that he used many, many, many times. You know, somebody made a made a mistake. You know, he called him an asshole, <laughs> and so he used it so many times for so many people. He said, "All right." We have to get actually an adjective to that because we just don't buy that. We just are assholes. I was flashing the film, so I was the flashing asshole. There was a big, heavy lady uh, who was the wardrobe person. He became the mama asshole. And then so on. And then the assistants, the assistant asshole. And then so on. Everybody had an adjective. And guess what? What was Michael Cimino's asshole name? The supreme asshole. Castoret! Kutugrebe! Castoret! Molina! I was so happy to do that movie that I didn't think about if I lost any other movie, you know, why I was doing that. I was well paid, like uh, many, many people. I think in those days you were paid very well, not like today. It, it happens, yeah, everybody's salary is going down. In those days, we had a decent salary. The unions were controlling most of it. And uh, I don't think that I was worried about, you know, what my next job is going to be. I wanted to do this right. And uh, it turned out it, it was right. I was exhausted, I was happy. And it was a good feeling, it was really a great feeling. And another thing was interesting, that when all those critics came out with the bad reviews, I was shooting a movie in Philadelphia, Blowout, with Mary Brian De Palma. And we actually rented a bus, because all the, the crew which was working in Heaven's Gate was working with me on Blowout. And we went to New York to the premiere of the movie, but after the premiere, because he, he could not make the premiere. And it was like maybe uh, after it was decided that the movie is a disaster and, and all that, and we went to see the theater, the theater was, was half full, and, and when it was over, I was standing outside in the hallway, listening what the people say. And I, I and then many, many people looked at it, actually, at each other, and they said, uh, why do they say that this is a disaster? Why do you say it's a bad movie? It's a great movie. And most of the people were, ha were, were happy because the reviews were so bad. 
I hated the critics, and I, 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 I personally thought it was, it was great. And I don't know why I did think, but I, of course, you always like your own baby, you know, no matter how ugly it is, but it's a beautiful baby, right? So it was a beautiful baby for us. That's what the problem was, spending all that money and in, in order to get this. And, you know, they had to play it down, you know, they had to play it down. You know, but why did they spend all that money? Well, you know, in a way, it, uh, they were cautious to hire me because I was part of the expenditure, you know, of course. I was slow, I was, you know, Michael was slow, I was slow, everybody was slow. We were doing a, a great movie. So, I mean, uh, even in those days, you know, when people became when they're a little bit conscious about the expenditures, they don't like, actually, people who don't move fast. Today is the worst. Today is, forget it, <laughs> you know, that you know, today, you, I don't think we could ever make a movie like that. Michael really uh, spent a lot of time to think about things. And, uh, you know, I, I tried to do the best with lighting that I, I could do, you know, just to make it look natural and, and, and very poetic and uh, like, like paintings, you know. So a lot of uh, scenes look like paintings. And then we, we tried to do that. And we were very happy with the result. I'm very kind about it, and I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I think that very few movies uh, I felt so good about it, and then felt so good to be there. And uh, I know we had a, a happy crew. We, we, we knew that we were doing something special, and uh, as such, you know, I have good memories about the, the movie, no matter how bad. But sometimes, you know, Michael's. But it was very hard to, to deal with sometimes because he was very much under pressure from the studio and all that. So I understood that, that uh, you know, in, in his case, I probably would have been uh, doing the same thing what he was doing. And so I always liked him. And uh, it's a shame I cannot get, get him actually to do another movie with me, you know, because it would be great to see what he would do, what we would do again together.